It's an all-new year, and it's time for an all-new Wendy Williams show. Today, a daytime talk show first. NeNe and Greg Leakes. Are they really engaged? We'll get the dish. Plus, the inside scoop on Bethany's divorce and Leanne and Eddie's Stevie vacation. And Wendy's got the latest on Kim Ye's pregnancy. Now, here's Wendy. Exactly where I've been dying to be for the past two weeks. My break was way too long. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, dear heart, I've thought about you for the past two weeks. We've got a fantastic show set up for you. Lots of juicy celebrity hookups over the holidays. Uh, one of your favorite pop stars is sparking some controversy. And of course, Kanye, Kim, and the baby. Yeah. Let's talk about it all. It's time for Hot Topics. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I think when we take a vacation that you guys will forget about me and not come back. But I saw so many people, I, I saw so many people in the streets though, you know, while we were on vacation at the grocery stores and everybody and everybody's like, well, what do you think about this hot topic? What do you think about that? Wendy, when do we get new shows? I'm so glad to be back. But I did have a wonderful holiday. I hope you did too. I hope you had a terrific holiday. Um, you know, the holidays were no big deal at our house. It was just about family, um, a quiet New Year's Eve. As a matter of fact, I was so caught up in the ID channel because I'm an ID addict <laughs> that I missed the 10, 9, 8, 7 countdown. Because at midnight, you know, they're setting up the next show. So, but I did have my drink. You know, I had my Nouveau cocktails to toast the new year. I was, I was drinking the, uh, the red velvet cake and the peach cobbler, deliciosa. <laughs> love it, love it, delicious. And, and um, then New Year's Day, there was some great TV on. I don't know whether you're watching the Bewitch Marathon or, or what you're watching. Me, I was stuck at the Odd Couple. I watched almost every single odd couple. Then, in the past two weeks, um, a lot of my favorite TV was on, just like random stuff to pass the time. Like, did I ever tell you that one of my favorite movies of all time is The, Door or the Doors movie with Val Kilmer? Yes. That, yes, oh my gosh. Anyway, that was on VH1, and then The Braxton's. I watched so many marathons of The Braxton. They, they remind me why it is that having a bunch of sisters is probably one of the best things in the world. I only have one sister, but I can imagine having like four more and you know. Anyway, um, and um, oh, you know, in the beginning of our hiatus, I had gone to Vegas on account of, you know, you know, we work hard here at the show and I just wanted to blow off some steam. And so me and my husband go just, you know, to hang out and party and be young and be fun. So here we go to the airport, okay. <laughs> About to get on the plane, we're like a half hour early, so we're sitting reading magazines, look up, and who's there? A real life hot topic, iced tea. <laughs> well see, here's the problem <laughs> with, with doing, it's about my entire career, from radio to now, whatever, you know. I've always been the hot topics lady, and it's really easy to do it when I'm being encouraged by a couple of hundred people <laughs> in, in gorgeous clothing, you know. But then when I step out of the studio, I'm by myself. And there's iced tea, and we had just talked about it on that show earlier. You know, okay, iced tea, not only was he in the airport, he was on our airline, he was in this, we were all sitting together. <laughs> Coco wasn't with him on a counter, he was going out to Vegas to see her in Peep Show. You know, his wife Coco. Well, so the New York Daily News is now reporting that Coco and Ice-T are no longer on the rocks. 
it's all going well. Okay, and, and, I, and I have a couple of things to interject. You know, uh, Coco had taken some really questionable pictures with that um, rapper, uh, AP9 from Oakland, and the, the pictures didn't, they weren't a good look, but um, you know, she's out in Vegas for the next six months doing Peep Show. He was on the flight. He actually invited us to go to the Peep Show, but we were, you know, trying to do our own little couples thing for the time, but Ice-T and Coco, from what I saw, they're good. So, uh, we love your love, <laughs> and good luck. And it was really awkward seeing him because he never mentioned anything about anything, you know. Yo, Wendy, you know, we hear you talking on the show and you know, we, we don't just talk here, we squawk. Squawk, squawk, squawk! He mentioned nothing, like a true gentleman. Thank you, Ice-T, and good luck again to you guys. Okay, so now, the story that everybody's talking about, and I still am very conflicted, um, Kim Kardashian being pregnant. I thought about you as soon as I heard this. I was like, that's it. Let's end the vacation right now. Let's get back. <laughs> okay, so apparently we all know this, that Kim is still legally married to Chris Humphreys. Um, uh, according to Radar Online, unless uh, Kim gives in, he's still asking for his demand, which is admit the marriage was fake. <laughs> Well, admit it was a fraud. And then we can be divorced. In the meantime, if, if, if Kim doesn't get this divorce, then she'll be married to another man, having another man's baby. It's, it, it's messy, but that's, that's you, Kim. <laughs> um, and I, I have to say, though, congratulations on the baby. Um, I think that this is a bigger come up for Kim than it is for Kanye. I, I must say, uh, as a lover of the art form, and I, and I do really like his music, I just think that this has just thrown a big whack blanket over his entire situation <laughs> by being this involved now with this family. I just, I'm, I'm just not, <sighs> On the other hand, on the other hand, you know, haters are still gonna hate. Like I was watching um, E! News over the weekend and they had a panel. And the panel was of the experts. Did anybody see this? Was I the only one watching TV? Okay, you saw it. So they, they had the panel of experts, you know, like, you know, big mouth, you know, hot topics people. And they were asking them, okay, so whose baby are you looking forward to the most? They threw Jessica Simpson in there, they threw Kate Middleton and they threw Kim Kardashian. Everybody's talking about Kate Middleton, I'm like, every last one of you are lying. Oh. Through the TV, <laughs> through, the, through the TV I'm just saying like, don't try to seem smart and, and high class talking about you can't wait for Kate Middleton's baby, please. And Jessica Simpson, we've already seen you, I mean not please, but just you know, like, like I'm from Jersey, I don't do royalty, I do Kardashian. <laughs> so, as much as I hate to say it, I, you know, um, the, you know, and then Jessica, we've already seen you have a baby, so that, that's, that's, not, that's nothing big. And attention all you celebrities and, and uh, starlets, nobody get pregnant while Kim is pregnant because the only, <laughs> the only baby that people are really waiting to see, and, and not just the look, but the lifestyle, like will he marry her? Will they have a spin-off reality show? It's messy and we don't necessarily want to, but we're still keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> And then, and then, you know, on account of my parents have been in town the whole holiday, here goes my mother uh, squawking up. So, I guess Chloe's heart must be broken. I was like, mommy, leave it to you to say the obvious. Right? Hang in there, Chloe. Your day will come too. Um, and now, this uh, Justin Bieber weed thing, or ale allegedly, we don't know what it was, but apparently he's doing uh, something to shed his good boy image. It's gotta be tough, like when you're a kid and you're trying to, you know, be, be a grown up and sometimes you resort to all kinds of things. I don't know, TMZ captured this picture. There he is. Uh, he has a little something brown in his hand. Now. It could be a blunt, which for those of you who don't know what a blunt is, but you know what weed is. Nobody uses rolling papers anymore, old people. <laughs> they use, they, the, the kids, they use cigars and they gut the cigar out and then they dump all the um, cigar guts and they replace it with weed. <laughs> and then they roll it up and then they have to lick it really hard on the counter, there's no stickiness on it. And then they, they, they pull on that and that's what you call a blunt. So it could either be a blunt or maybe it's a tipperillo. 
if you're a person of a particular age, then you remember what a tipperilla was. All the old pimps used to smoke them. <laughs> they look like cigars, except they have that white tip. Or if you're a beautiful black woman from the 70s, it could be a Moore cigarette. Remember Moore's? <laughs> Moore's are what? <laughs> they were like this long. And they were brown and really skinny. And that was when smoking was really glamorized. And they were also brown. So I don't know what this is. All I know is that whoever it is that calls themselves a friend who took that picture, they are totally out of our clique. Yeah. You know, drugs are still drugs and we don't know whether those were drugs. But you know, whatever is going on in this picture, it looks like a normal 19 year old if he wasn't a celebrity. Yeah. Or better not be my child. <laughs> but I'm just saying, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, he looks like he's doing what 19 year olds do. And I mean, I can hear, you know, mothers um, screaming every place, but my kid looks up to him. But your kid shouldn't be getting raised by a pop star. Your kid should be getting raised by you. And. And I just, you know, and, and for Justin, it's gotta be very difficult for him because not only is he, Short, which will keep him looking, which will keep him looking younger than than most until forever. But he's also very young in the face, young like young, and so you know. Anyway, you've apparently Justin, you're disappointing people, but you know it is what it is. Take care, kid. And then. And then this, real, I, I was gonna wear black today, but I said, wait, that might be too predictable. You know, you're away and then you're eating and then, then you wear the black. But I took out the tape measurer. Do you keep a tape measure around? Like, is there, is there, is there, okay. <laughs> when I got here this morning, I took out my tape measure and drank a lot of water, you know, to get ready for the show. And I said, well, I don't have to wear black. I can go with ox blood. Okay, I'll save the black for another time. I'm good. Um, so, Okay, but back to young people and some of the things that they do. Okay, so Rihanna's also caused some controversy. Now, if you follow her on Twitter or Instagram, then you know Rihanna is always doing something. And the best thing that you can do if you follow her is do not call her out on it because she will read you. <laughs> she will. Okay, so she posted a picture of what appears to be a marijuana bud. And the caption is, Look, she says, uh, this nug, as in nugget, uh, look like a skull, or am I just buzzed? Uh, uh, no, because as I squint and look, your nug does look like a skull. Doesn't it look like a, doesn't it look like a skull? <laughs> anyway, her fans all of a sudden get all righteous and attack her for being a bad influence. Really? Well, apparently you just started following her, okay? <laughs> Rihanna is the worst who's ever done it. Uh, if, you, if you follow her, okay, another fan said that Rihanna was, is heading down the same path as Whitney Houston. This, now this is, the, as opposed to just sitting back and reading her post, they want to attack her. So now here goes Rihanna attacking back. <laughs> Hold on, she goes, she goes, uh, so the fan says, you know, you're gonna end up down the same path as Whitney Houston. And Rihanna goes, yeah, cause Whitney overdosed on a joint. F out of here, you weak B. <laughs> you asked for it. You asked for it. When people are getting right, they don't need to be hearing from the righteous. A mess. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm just pointing that out to you cause that's what we do. Okay, so did you see Here Comes Honey Boo Boo last night? Yeah. All right, I'm conflicted. You didn't watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Because I told, did you watch the Ab Fab Marathon on Logo? It was on all day, absolutely fabulous. Are you looking forward to Deception tonight? Yeah. Okay. Well, on account of my mom made a really good dinner last night, I got very distracted and then I caught the itis. <laughs> so I was a little too tired, I forgot Honey Boo Boo was on, uh, but apparently Mama June got a brand new look. <laughs> and, and this is what she looked like before. <laughs> and you know, the gray hair always pulled back, um, the loving smile. And let's take a look at what uh, Mama June's big reveal.
Chewbacca, be surprised. You do? What is it? Can we ask? Mama! Bubba, Bubba. That's a sexy mama now. June looks like a blonde ball chip. Bubba, boom. I love beating us. I mean, it, <laughs> it looked like a professional job. And if more of us were more accepting of ourselves, that I mean, because their love for each other is hot. I mean, there she is. Clearly, she needs a good diet and, and a chinectomy. But he, but he also had that mess up, up here, you know? That, 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 you ever kiss a guy who has that, that skull, that, you know, has the tobacco right there? They're always spitting in the skull in. Anyway, what a messy, loving family. We love them. By the way, uh, June. <laughs> June says that uh, she's not going Hollywood. According to TMZ, Mama June set aside a trust fund for Honey Boo Boo and her sisters. You know, the family's making between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars per episode, and I know. And so the money will be stashed away for the girls until they're twenty-one, because she wants the girls to be able to look back on the experience and say, "Mama played it smart." Thank you, Mama. And I think that's terrific. Okay. So it's a new year, and I'm really excited for American Idol premiering next week. Are you? Yeah. The commercials have been looking really good. The three judges really make me want to watch. There's a new story in The Hollywood Reporter, and it's saying that Mariah Carey had to be convinced to be a part of the show. She says that um, you know lots of the, the, the singing competition shows approached her, and I'm sure that they did, but it was her husband, Nick, who convinced Isn't that like a nice lady dress, right? <laughs> Like, I'm a nice girl. Um, um, uh, her husband, Nick Cannon, convinced her that she should do Idol because Idol produces the biggest stars. And it's, um, according to Nick and Mariah, you know, the most credible of all the shows. So I think it's great. I think she's going to be very good for the show. We're going to be looking forward to seeing all the costume changes um, and, and, you know, the hair looks and the whole bit. And, oh, Barbara Walters interviews Mariah tonight on, on the television. So there's another thing that we have to watch. Oh, by the way, the judges over at Idol, um, uh, well, Nicki Minaj, according to uh, the same article in The Hollywood Reporter, was reluctant to join the judges over at uh, Idol because she was worried that it would hurt her hip-hop hip credibility um, and that she'd be overexposed. <laughs> well, it will, and you are, but who's gonna turn down the Idol job? I mean, like, it will. There's certain people in hip-hop who also look at Kanye now as crazy because he's with a car damn dashian <laughs> But, 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 here's the thing. Nikki, who turns down an, an opportunity like this? So to your fans who can't deal with it, oh well, they can put that where? Way back there. <laughs> um, and then the Hollywood Reporter is saying, now here's the thing, Nikki. They're talking about you already, talking about how you're late to the set every day. Don't do it, Miss Thing. The worst thing you can do is be late because they will get somebody in there to replace you in a heartbeat. Please don't do the deep. Please be on time and please give us all the cuckoo crazy and nutty that we want. Okay. I mean, so wait. So back to tonight's TV. So we have Barbara Walters interviewing Mariah Carey. Well, I just found out about that this morning. I had no idea, because my cue was already set. I'm watching Megan Good's new show, Deception. <laughs> that show looks so good. It's on NBC at 10 o'clock, um, and she's gonna be here next Monday. And I am, <laughs> and I'm totally watching Lisa Vanderpump's uh, new spinoff from the Housewives of Beverly Hills. The commercials look really good, don't they? <laughs> Vanderpump Rules. I have a clip for you. Okay, first of all, you never know how these shows are gonna start out, but just the idea that her restaurant sir in Beverly Hills is saying that's the one where you bring the mistress. Oh, you know, she has two restaurants, one where you bring the wife and then the other where you bring the mistress. But the reality show was centered around the one where you bring the mistress. And then not only that, but the commercials have been really interesting because the staff is like young and hot and apparently some of them sleep with one another. And so, but the show is kicking off tonight with a confrontation between Brandy Glanville and one of the waitresses at Sir named Sheena. Well, it turns out that Sheena used to sleep with Brandy Glanville's hot ex-husband, Eddie Cibrian, while they were still married. 
So the confrontation goes down tonight, and I've got the sneak peek. Let's watch. I'm just trying to explain to you how my feelings got invested. It all... Yes, I was young, I was naive, I was stupid, I ignored signs, and I just... I was, it was stupid. It's not, your, I, it's not your fault. I mean, it's his fault. I yeah. mean, I would never say someone stole my man because you can't steal a man. You, you have to be willing to go. And for that, it's his fault. You know, he's going to be in my life forever because we have two little boys together. Sorry, I don't want to get upset. He was the love of my life. He was my everything. Makes you want to watch, though, right? Yeah. Lisa Vanderpump will be here on Wednesday of this week. Oh, keep the claps going. We have a great show planned for you today. Uh, you know, we have a daytime exclusive. Our friend Nene Leakes and her husband Greg Leakes are here. Oh, her fiance. For the first time, Greg will be on the couch and we'll talk about the couple and also, you know, because we watched their breakup on The Housewives of Atlanta. They've rekindled the romance. They're engaged over the holidays, so we'll get all the details. Plus, up next, our friend Erica Vitrini is here. She's gonna join us with the inside scoop on Bethany Frankel's divorce and the latest with Eddie Cibrian and Leanne Rimes. So hurry back. Thank you. <laughs> Here with the juicy celebrity news, please welcome to our show, Erica Vitrini. Yeah. How you doing? Good to be here. You too. All right, let's get right to it. it. So Bethany Frankel and Jason Hoppy, they're getting divorced. I was sorry to hear about that. Yes, actually, you know, we until now we, we heard separation. They were still living together, but today yeah. it comes out in the news. She has filed a summons for divorce in the New York City uh, court. She filed. So it is official. It is moving forward. And if, apparently, she's really disappointed in herself. She wanted this marriage to work. She yeah. worked really hard. Her fans are devastated, as you've heard. Yeah. We've watched the show. We've seen this this it's a single, basically a single girl's dream, yeah. right? They um, successful career. She gets married. She has the kids. All is going well. But the sources say that the really the issues, and we saw it a bit on the shows, um, at Bethany Ever After, was that uh, they fought over money. We get that. Yeah. Family and gender roles, right? Gender roles. I mean, what do you think, Wendy? Because this is where I find it really hard. I want to point fingers and say that Bethany was completely controlling and all those things, but I love her. And I feel like it really takes two to tango. It, it takes two to tango. Right? Yes. He publicly came out, and I know you've mentioned on the show, saying that uh, financially he was never imagined his wife doing that there and going there. Therein lies the problem. Therein lies the problem. And there is a lot of stake. Let's talk prenups. What do you think? You think they have one? Yes. Of she, course they she do. Was, she was rich before they, or she, she was involved with uh, the skinny girl before she met him. Absolutely. She's got four New York Times bestsellers. Yeah. She's got um, a, a, a healthy living a lifestyle company called Skinny Girl, which uh -huh. sold just the margarita portion, sold for over $100 yeah. million. There's a lot at stake. She's got and her. she's got a talk show coming up, but they've also got Brynn to think about. And I would imagine they'd want to do the best for her. And that is what I love about this couple and what I love about Bethany. She is a hard worker. I believe she worked hard on her marriage, and I believe she's going to work really Really hard to keep this family together. I, wanna, her I, I would love to for them to get a quick divorce though, like Tom and Katie. Like if they could get a divorce that quick, then so could a lot of people, like without all the bickering and stuff. Anyway, uh, good luck with that. I want to yes. hear about Sean Paul. I know. We gotta get to the juicy stuff. Um, yeah, fill me in on this story okay. because it's sketchy to me also. Go. Okay, for those of you who don't know who Sean Paul is, he's an international Give music Give me the superstar. light and pass the draw. <laughs> right, with his blend, it's pop and reggae, right? right and he's hot stuff. and, and he's friend hot. to the show. And friend to the show. Well, his crazy ex-lover, Suzanne Persons, just filed an $80 million lawsuit in the Manhattan Supreme Court. This is where it gets crazy. With this filing, she submitted a 120-page expose. It was like a book report. And on the cover, she, she actually drew a picture of the two of them. I think we might have it to show you. It is Oh, creepy. Is, she off, is she off her rocker? She's off her rocker. Off her rocker. And then the title, I had to write this down because it was so long. <laughs> Irie Jamboree, my life in Jamaica as a jet set slave with the enormous secret of a love, secret of a love affair with Jamaica's perhaps most well-known artist, dance hall artist, 
Sean Paul. Look at this cover. It is so creepy. <laughs> Okay, now, this by, is the only picture we have of her. By showing you the, by showing the cuckoo crazy, already you're torpedo in your own case, and she might very well have every. She might be on point with what she's saying, but, but you're whoa. delivering it like the crazy. No. So has Sean Paul responded? No, he hasn't. In, in it, there, he, she says some crazy stuff, like he's got a cocaine habit. She was a jet set slave. That they, he hired people to deport her out of Jamaica. Um, very crazy, and that his cocaine habit lift, uh, led to a little bit of erectile dysfunction. Oh. 120 pages of some pretty good stuff. What do you think? Oh, are we gonna see this stuff around the internet? I'd like to go home and do I some reading. So. Okay. All right, now let's talk about uh, Leanne Rhymes uh, spending habits and, and Eddie Cibrian, her, her husband. Well, we saw from your clip earlier that obviously the loyalty is always an issue with Eddie. So apparently, uh, according to Star Magazine, a source tells them that uh, she's trying to buy Eddie Cibrian's love by spending a lot of money on him. Trips to Mexico, a Cartier, and a Rolex watch. Thank you very much. Oh. And that Eddie is pretty good at spending Leanne's money on Leanne. With that money, allegedly, he purchased her her $85,000 engagement ring, okay? But listen, times are tough here. Uh, Leanne Rives was a, at one time, I think worth about $38 million, yeah, right? Uh -huh. Not so much anymore. Well, not with Eddie around, I guess. That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Going through it. And she hasn't sang, sang a song in a while. That's just it. She's now playing a lot smaller venues. Yeah. And his, also his uh, career is sort of, you know, all over the place. Thanks to you, because I watched the Playboy Club, Eddie. Nobody uh. else watched the Playboy Club. I was voting for you. Yeah. But he does have a, he has a, a small uh, part on, uh, I, I believe, on um, uh, Tyler Cleveland. Parents. No, on Single, it's Single Moms Club. Oh, so, oh, Tyler Perry's new uh, Oh, thing. a new show. Yep. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, I mean, it's kind of scary when your money, your, your relationship is based around uh, money, if you know what I'm talking Watch about. Watch yourself, Leanne, there. <laughs> Erica, thank you so much. No These problem. are all great stories. I love this. Okay. <laughs> Erica Petrini, everybody, you keep it here up next. Nene and Greg Leakes are doing couch chat. Don't go away. Thank you. All right, so for the last five seasons of Real Housewives of Atlanta, we've seen our next guest happily married, and then turmoil, and then the divorce. But this season, they've rekindled their romance. Oh, take a look. Well, you know, I was thinking about opening up an office in LA. Where you gonna live at? I would be given a key to something. Get you a key to a hotel room that's down the street. Greg, yeah. sit down. Do you think they're used to doing this kind of stuff? Yeah, here keys to my house. I don't want the keys to your house. I want keys to yours. You see, you got one gold, two silver. Front door, back door, heart. The heart is gold. <laughs> Please welcome Nene and Greg Leakes. <laughs> I don't know who to give the shoe cam to first, Greg or Nene. <laughs> I like your shoes, Playa. Well, thank you. Ah, Nene, ah, it's okay, always hi. great to see you. Good to see you too. Happy New Year. Good. Thank you. You too. Hi. There's um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving the new tweaks in your hair. I saw it last oh, night on Watch you. What Happens. I was like, what? Did you did you notice it last night when you were watching? There's something in the bangs. Yes. Yeah. And. I'm really happy that you guys are back together. Wendy. Yes. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Oh, wait, okay. You don't have an engagement ring? Yes. You can't show it. Okay. Until the spin-off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Nene, something like that. Are you guys going no, to have a spin-off to get married? Show. We're going to do something kind of special to show. Yeah. This this the Atlanta Housewives show. Yeah. Bravo. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're involved in so many things. Oh. Yes. You're going to have a spin-off? I don't know if I want to do that. You know, they've asked me to do a spinoff so many times, and I've always said no. So I don't know. But uh, 
that now that you and Greg are back together, it would be more family oriented as opposed to fussing and fighting and and you know uh, a lot of mess. Nothing to fight know. about. There's nothing to there fight about. There isn't, Greg. There really isn't. Um, Greg, you um, you seem to have been there for Nene. During <laughs> during the ups and downs of, of of her ride of her ride on TV, but I want to know what happened. Why you guys broke up initially? Can we talk May honestly I? about that? I, I, I'm the type of person to where Wendy. I never focus on where I am. I focus on where I'm trying to go. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So and I'm saying that in other words to say it's irrelevant to what broke us up. Look at where we are going forward. I don't lend space to that. <laughs> all I was, all I was trying to find out if he has a wandering eye. <laughs> My eyes wander to this luscious one. Yes. <laughs> now, during your time apart, you were with John, the pizza man, and <laughs> well, you know the pizza czar. Uh, how did you feel about that, Greg? I got pizza out of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still going to be opening your uh, pizza place in the Sacramento airport with John? Yeah, it's still there. You know, it's open. Oh, it's already open? It's been open for over a year now, so oh. we still have that business. Nice, nice. Now, Greg, um, with with the family now being bi-coastal, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. have you opened up the uh, the real estate in, in L.A. yet? I'm developing real estate and taxes with capital tax in L.A. and Atlanta. Very nice. Uh -huh. And you guys' son, how does he feel about his parents being back together? Brent, um, he's 13, and uh, when we were divorcing and separated, it was making Brent really sad because he's only known his mom and dad since he was born. Yeah. And so he was sad about it, and now that we're together, he's really happy about it. I'll bet. Um, uh, and, and the relationship with Kenya and Walter, okay, am I the only one last <laughs> night? When they, were, when they were at the fishing hole, Walter, you behaved like a woman to Kenya, okay? You, ma you actually made Kenya look good last night, and you came off crazy. Did you see the episode? I watched the episode, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold, but I would have to say that I think it was a good scene, a good acting scene. Um, um, I almost believed them. <laughs> it was like, where's the script? You know? <laughs> Are people talking all in the streets of Atlanta about the relationship being phony, though? Yeah, a lot of people talk about it. You know, I have to say this, though. I've been a housewife of Atlanta for five seasons and yes. going into my sixth season, and, um... Everything we do on the show is legit. We're not scripted. We are real. What you see happen is what really happens on the show. And so to look at Kenya and Walter and um, to know they did something that was unethical she, to our she, franchise, she, I think it is awful. The word is, is that she, it's not her real boyfriend that he's kind of boyfriend for hire. Okay, and then um, Phaedra and Apollo are mm -hmm. pregnant. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. I know. First of all, can I just say, I never heard about the divorce rumors until I watched you all. I'd never heard about divorce rumors with them. Well, I didn't either. I was out of town. When I got back home, I heard about it. <laughs> That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You're so fabulous now with mm -hmm. the back and forth. That, yeah. That, uh... <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> I was gone. But I will have to say, every time I see Apollo and Pedro together, they seem like a real couple. And uh, I have to say congratulations to them because when yeah. women are in their 40s, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's hard for them to conceive and things like that. So I would have to say kudos to Phaedra. Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. will you have a big, gigantic wedding the second time around? Or uh, are you going to just go to the Justice of the Peace? The first time we got married, it was a big wedding. And now that I am, you know, the fabulous Nene Leakes, honey, it will be even bigger. <laughs> 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 Maybe with, with Bravo picking up the tab. Yeah. Okay, so will you be back with the, um, with the other girls minus Kim next um, season? Probably, you know, this is how I think about it. The, uh, the platform of the Real Housewives of Atlanta has given me so much. It has opened up so many huge doors of opportunity for me. I can't see myself just really leaving. And I also feel like I'm the mom and I'm the only original housewife that is left. Yeah. So I don't really feel like I want to leave. Don't leave us. No, I don't 
really want to leave. And then I have to be there to protect, you know, make sure people aren't coming on with phony stories, yeah. honey. You know, <laughs> like, wait a minute. Call them out and flutter your eyes. Yeah. We love when you do that. Yeah, I have good, I'm a good judge of character. Yes. I can, I can pick it up right away. However, I want to say this, because I don't want Kenya to be all upset with me. We have found a place mm -hmm. where we are, you know, finding friendship and things like, uh-uh. No, no. I'm, I'm listening uh -uh. closely. <laughs> We are finding, you know, friendship. When we were on the show shooting... <laughs> I... You're busy in Hollywood. No, and we... look, we're taking a break. Up next, everybody, find out how Greg and Nene, how, how well they really know each other. We're gonna play a fun game with them called I Do Take Two. We'll be back. through the whole commercial break. I can't even uh, share most of what we said, but look. You better not. Nene, no, never that. <laughs> Nene is back with Greg and they are happy and we're celebrating their love. But I also want to congratulate you on being the cover girl of Ebony Magazine's oh, Power you. Issue. Okay. Um, I, uh, you know, word to the street is that people are criticizing you for posing in a bathtub full of diamonds with the money dress. Oh. Really? So bad. Um, you know, listen, no, you know, when I originally was asked to be the cover girl for the, the, the Money and Power uh, cover, they told me they wanted me to do the dress with all the money on it. And so we thought that was going to be the cover. However, I did the photo shoot. I don't get to choose what pictures they use for the cover. Yes. The editors chose that picture. That's the picture they wanted to use, so that's what they used. Now, yes, we did get a lot of negative feedback from people, but just as much negative, we got that much positive. Good. good for you. Good for you, Nene. <laughs> We're doing real sister to sister right now. You're a sister to sister? Sister to sister magazine. Right oh, now. good. On her cover. Go yeah. on the cover. Mm -hmm. She's doing it. Okay, look, um, we're gonna play a game. It's called um, I Do Take Two with Nene and Greg to test their love, okay? okay. I'm gonna ask questions and then we're going to figure out um, who, who, um, who has... Okay, so we're okay. gonna use these. Okay. <laughs> Each other's love? Get <laughs> okay, let's begin. Who made the first move to get back together? Uh-uh, Greg, what are you I doing? I gotta look at the pictures to see which one to pull. Who yeah. made the first move to get back together? Uh, okay. Haney? Uh, okay, Greg, you show the picture. <laughs> okay, Greg says Greg. Okay, come on, put the paddles Greg, back down. Which one? Okay. Okay, we have to speed it up. All right. Okay. Who's quicker to pick up the check at dinner? Nene or uh. Greg? Nene says, oh, <laughs> Nene says Greg and Greg says Nene. It's, it's the same money. Okay. <laughs> it is. We're going to have to figure it out. It's the same money. Okay. If you weren't rich enough for a maid, who would do the dishes? Oh. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Who is more likely to get caught going through the fast food drive-thru? Greg! <laughs> <laughs> Nene, um, I heard last night you um, turned away the cake on Andy's show because you're yeah. dieting. You look terrific. Yes, thank you. Okay, also, <laughs> who, who, has, who has the higher freak number in the bedroom, Nene or Greg? Greg! I'm such a brute! You guys seem to know each other very well, and uh, there yes. is a gift, Greg. Yes. It's for you to watch <laughs> and for her to utilize. Where's the gift? Oh. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's money lingerie. I love that. To celebrate your love. <laughs> and thank you, Nene and Greg, for being here so much. Everybody, The Real Housewives oh, of Atlanta oh, airs great. Sunday nights at 8 on Bravo. And Nene's show, The New Normal, is back Tuesday nights at 9.30 on NBC. Still ahead, I'm gonna read some of your comments about today's hot topics in our feedback segment. But up next, it's time for Ask Wendy. Keep it here. You guys are stupid. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for Ask Wendy. How you doing? Hi, Wendy. How you doing? <laughs> my name is Carrie. I'm 23. Mm -hmm. My question is about my mother. She's been dating her boyfriend for about five years now, uh -huh. um, and I refuse to meet him for the simple fact that she cheated on my dad with him. Okay. I know. <laughs> it's a new year. Yeah. Should I try to do something, get a relationship with him, or what do you think? 
Well, you don't have to have a separate relationship with him, but certainly, well, it's very big of you. Yeah, new year, new beginnings. And just keep in mind, your mother was the one with the most to lose. She's the one who cheated. She knew that she had a beautiful, you know, daughter at home and a husband. So you can't blame the man, even though he went along with the cheating. She had more to lose than him. So the relationship that you really want to work on would be the relationship with your mother, while simultaneously getting to know this guy. And don't bring up the pink elephant in the room. He knows what he did, but she knows what she did. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, everybody, keep it here. We're gonna share some of your comments about today's Hot Topics next. Time for Wendy fan feedback. Earlier on Hot Topics, we were talking about Kim and Kanye and having a baby, and here's what some of you guys had to say. Glenn T writes, sorry, I can't be happy for someone who's still married and pregnant with another man. I don't condone adultery. When you break it down like that, it sounds very hood. <laughs> All right, Emilda C says, uh, we are no one to judge Kim and Kanye. This is their choice, and I know their baby will be t well taken care of and loved. And a final comment from Amanda S who says, I don't care either way. I just hope that they don't name the baby something ridiculous like all the other celebrities usually do. You mean like Apple or Blue Ivy? There's nothing wrong with being unique. Besides, you know the name is gonna start with a K. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All right, uh, listen, I love when you get in on the conversation each and every day. Follow me on Facebook or, or uh, like me on Twitter. Like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. <laughs> Do something, wendyshow.com, get in on the party. We'll be right back. <laughs> Happy to be here. I had a great time today. I want to thank today's guests, Nene and Greg Leakes, also Erica Vitrini with the Inside Scoop, my fabulous co host, my studio audience. <laughs> Tomorrow, we've got another terrific show. Cindy Lauper's dropping by, and we'll also have some must see fashion accessories for the new year. I love you for watching today, and I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye bye. <laughs>